All right, folks, Phil Zito here, and welcome to week three of the BAS Bootcamp. And this week, we are going to be starting to explore supervisory devices. So, so far in this course, we have went through inputs and outputs. We've talked about what a BAS is. We've looked at controllers. We've looked at setting up inputs and outputs. And now we're going to start to look at supervisory devices. This week, we're going to go through supervisory devices. We're going to go through trunks, graphics, etc. So supervisory device originally existed for the sole purpose of supervising field controllers. It would do this through a thing called a supervisory uh, field trunk and the field trunk also known as a field bus would allow us to be able to map in our field controllers we'd be able to pull in our field controllers and our field controllers would then communicate data to the supervisory device which in turn would go and display these points from the field controllers to a graphical user interface so what you see on my screen right here is known as Niagara Workbench. Niagara is one of the more popular building automation systems in the market. So it's uh, one of the products that we teach on in our programs. Uh, when I open up their version of a supervisory device called a station, you will see that uh, it's structured, if you've looked at other building automation systems before, it's structured different than other building automation systems. And under this config, um, under this drivers, we have our networks, right? So uh, if I had BACnet IP devices connected to our BACnet network, which is one of the protocols, more on this later in the week, that we utilize to map in our field controllers. If I had BACnet devices on this, you would be able to see them here. But essentially what happens, right? The supervisory device we go and add a network. And this network, whether it's Niagara network, BACnet network, LAN network, Modbus network, whatever, it allows us to map in devices. Once we've mapped in the devices, then we have their points. And it looks kind of something like this, right? We have their points under a specific device. Then with their points, we're able to do all sorts of things. We're able to go and display their points in a graphic if we wanted to. We're able to use programming, as you're seeing here, to be able to do logic with the points. We're able to add uh, extensions. I think I have one on one of these. Yeah, right here. Like a history extension. So we're able to go, and also known as a trend extension by some other manufacturers, we're able to go and see what the value of particular points is over a period of time. That's one of the benefits of a supervisory device, right? Originally, they were meant to bring in the data from field controllers and just simply display them so that end users could interact with them. But nowadays, we have capabilities of doing alarming, of trending, of scheduling, all of this in more detail later in the week. But we're able to go and pull all of these systems in, and then we're able to go and add them to graphics and do all these other features that I mentioned. So the supervisory device is a very powerful device, but what we're actually seeing in the industry is the need for supervisory devices with the advent of IP controls is starting to decrease because remember, originally supervisory devices were meant to map in field controllers and help them communicate their data to a front end that could then display their data to the end user. I know I'm not demonstrating a lot of stuff here. We will later in the week, but what that is happening in the industry is with IP controls that now have all of these supervisory device capabilities in the actual field controller, we're able to go and break our dependency on supervisory devices. So you're starting to see the need for supervisory devices decrease. We're also starting to see that more manufacturer equipment has controls built into it. So those um, are actually going to some of them have their own graphics and their own support software built into them to the point where you don't need supervisory devices. That's not to say supervisory devices are going away per se, but the need for them is starting to decrease, albeit not highly noticeably.
One of the other things I want to point out with this video is that with a supervisory device, you can have multiple supervisory devices. And as you start to get to a point where you have a lot of supervisory devices, you're going to utilize a server to then pull all of those supervisory devices into one central point. Uh, from which the user can interface with the building automation system. So as I mentioned, this is going to be a shorter video. For the rest of the week, we are actually going to start looking at building out a network, mapping in some controllers. We're also going to look at some basic extensions, alarm extensions, and trend extensions. We're going to look at some basic schedules. And we're also going to go and look at doing some basic graphics. So that's what you can expect for the rest of this week in the BAS Bootcamp. If there's something else you'd like to see us be covering in the BAS Bootcamp, then I encourage you to reach out in the comment section below the video. But other than that, just remember supervisory devices are simply devices that exist for the purpose of bringing data into the front end so that we can then use this data in the front end, whether you're an end user or an energy manager, or whoever you are, you can then display the data and use the data. So we get the data via the inputs and outputs into the controllers, which then utilize field trunks, whether IP field trunks or RS or RS-45, like serial field trunks, we get the data from the controllers into the supervisory device, which then allows us to display the data on graphics and allows us to manipulate and interact with the data. So there you have it. And like I said, through the rest of the week, we're going to be diving deeper into this. Thanks a ton for watching the videos. I really appreciate all of you making the comments you have made over the past couple weeks. And Definitely continue to share this information with your coworkers and your contacts. Uh, I really appreciate all of you doing that. Thanks a ton and take care.